Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Music and Vibes Podcast. I am your host, Kiana W. Mitchell. Well, guys, I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're happy. And I know I start off with this all the time because I just want you to have an amazing day. Now, I know your life is not perfect. I know that you probably have some issues that you're working through, things you have to deal with that may be unpleasant. But overall, I do hope that you guys are happy and that you're enjoying your life and you're having an amazing day. And if you're not, then I hope that you are evaluating your options and seeing what you need to do to fix it so that you can have an amazing day. Life is short, and I think it should be filled with fun and laughter, you know, good things. I know life is not going to be 100% all the time, but I think our outlook and the way we do things and view things can definitely make our lives more enjoyable. So if you hear me saying it all the time, I say it because it's true. I hope you're having an amazing day and that you're happy. Now, today is not as hot, thank God, as it has been forever this summer. And it's crazy because, you know, I talk about this all the time. So during the winter, I'm complaining, oh, it's so cold. I wish it was summer. I just can't deal with the cold. So then we get summer and then I'm like oh my god it's just so hot I need it to be at least cool so I think that my favorite times of the year would probably be autumn and spring because then you get it like even balanced it's like it's not too hot it's not too cold it is comfortable so last week and for the past couple of weeks it has been super hot and which has not been good for me because I record my podcast in my car And I do this because when I'm in the house, you can hear, like, my air conditioner come on. You can hear the kids making noise. And then I have to do so much noise reduction, it messes up the quality of of the whole podcast. I don't like to do it in the house a lot. The car is the best place because even though we live on the street and cars do go by, you don't hear it. It's like I'm insulated. I'm in my car, the window. This is like my personal studio. I would literally stay in here, but, you know, my kids would probably make me come in the house by bugging me. But anyway... I record the podcast in a car. So the last time I tried to do it in a car, a couple weeks ago, it was just so hot until sweat was like dripping off of me. So it was all on my arms. It was a mess. I was so hot until all the sweat and the heat and the humidity actually shut down my laptop. Like, yeah, it just literally cut off. And I noticed that like if I'm really sweaty and I hold a laptop on my lap. So if I have like a dress or something or a skirt, and my legs start to get all hot and sweaty because it's like a thousand degrees in the car and I'm trying to, you know, just wait it out so I can get through the podcast and then I can wind down a window. But if I, if I get that hot and all the sweat and the heat and humidity, it literally just shuts my laptop down. So my laptop has to be in a place where it's cool, where I can literally, where it will stay on and be okay. So the week before, my laptop totally just shut down. And I tried it again, and then I was like, okay, fine. So I took it in the house, and everything came back on. It was, you know, the rate heat with the temperature was regulated, so it was fine. So then a week after that, which was last week, I was like, okay, I'm just going to record in my, in my closet, which is also a good place because I do a lot of singing and recording there in my closet. But my cord was messed up. And because my cord was messed up, it kept shutting off my Audacity app which made it hard to record because if the light's not on, it would just stop the whole process of speaking on Audacity. And I was like, I don't know how to hold my cord in such a way where it's connected to the microphone so Audacity will not shut off. And that's just where I record the podcast. So I decided to go use my other recording um, software, which is Cursonis One. And I use that for my studio when I sing and write songs. So I use that. But even with that, the quality wasn't good, and I had to do a lot of work last week, and I was just praying that you guys would not be annoyed because the quality was not to the point where I liked it to be. So this week, thank God it's 70-some degrees out here. Yes, it's not a 1,000. And I came early in the morning, and I was like, we're going to get this done. You guys are going to have good quality sounding podcast today. So that's what I did. I'm in a car right now. I'm talking to you. I'm excited because I'm excited that first I get to talk to you again. I'm excited that it's Wednesday. We're halfway through our week and that I am going to give you guys a podcast with the sound quality that I actually think you deserve and want you to have. So I'm excited about that. This week I also decided that I was going to um, try to do something else. Now for those of you who don't know me, it's like 
I quit my job last year working as a rehabilitation counselor for the state of Alabama. I quit that job last year because I really wanted to spend more time focusing on my podcast and working on my music and trying to start a business. So I've been working on that this whole year. Now on the side, I am going to be honest, I have been working as a teacher for VIP Kids. But right now with everything that's going on, it's just like I haven't really put in a lot of hours on that. And on that particular app, it's like you have to, they don't give you classes like a lot of other places do. You have to, people just have to pick you, which is fine, but you don't know who's going to pick you and how many people are going to pick you. And sometimes it's like, especially with the coronavirus and everything, you did not get a lot of people choosing you to teach their classes. So you may have been making one thing before, you're no longer making that. So I was like, I think I need to change. I need to do something different. So I looked online and I found this other place called Say ABC, where it's the same thing only you teach multiple kids at one time and you have to, they give you the classes. That's the thing that I like the most, that they give you the classes. So you're not waiting for someone to choose you. They just say, okay, this is the class you teach at this time and you go with that. So I applied for it. They said that um, my application was accepted and all I have to do is the interview. Now, I am freaking out about this interview because of the fact that I'm not going to be able to talk to a person. They just want you to record the interview, and then they just plan to hire you if you pass or if you don't pass. And I like talking to people. I don't like to just record something, but I'm, this is something I'm going to have to do if I want to apply for this job. And I've been putting it off. I've been procrastinating, been putting it off. And the other day, I was like, Kiana, listen, there is no way that you're going to get this perfect. You can only do the best you can by preparing. But then after that, just do it. And I realized I'm just going to do it sometime this week before Friday. That's my deadline. I need to get it done by Friday. And I'm just going to do it, whether it's perfect or not. And here's why. I realized with myself, I do have the tendency to procrastinate. Yeah. But then, of course, I knew this because that is why my motto is, as soon as you give me something or as soon as I know I need to do something, I automatically do it because I know if I don't do it at that moment, then it's not going to get done because I can easily get distracted by watching the TV or by doing anything except what I'm supposed to do. So for me, the best thing is as soon as I actually find an assignment or there's something I need to do, I need to do it. That's why even with my personal schedule, I write everything down, give myself date and times, and I have expectations when things need to be done because if I don't do it at that moment, it's just not going to get done. So my deadline is Friday. It needs to get done. And between today and tomorrow, I'm just going to go ahead and do my research, do my preparations for the um, interview, and I'm just going to go do it. And the reason I'm just going to do it is because if I want to do this, I need to do it now. And that is one way I know that I can stop myself from procrastinating. Now, I think one of the good things about me is that I also do a lot of self-assessment, as you could probably tell. It's like I'm a psychology major. I have a master's in psychology. So, of course, I use a lot of that stuff on myself. And so I'm always self-assessing, like, what can you do better? What did? Why did you do this? And I'm always thinking about things like that. And I'm realizing that the reason I am procrastinating is not because I'm not able to do it, not because I'm not capable of doing it, but because I'm afraid to do it. And that's one of the things I've learned about myself during this quarantine period. Like, I am good. I am on stuff all the time. I'll get it done. But if it's something that I'm afraid to do, then I just will procrastinate and put it off. And so now that I know that I do this, I am starting to stop myself by just going ahead and doing it and giving myself a deadline and make sure I get it done. And I think that's a good thing because sometimes procrastination is good. People are not going to say this, but I think it's good sometimes because sometimes by procrastinating, you could be procrastinating because you're not sure about something and you need more time to research or this is just not a good fit for you and you probably shouldn't do it or you just need more time to think and come up with a decision about what you need to do. In those types of instances, procrastination is fine. But if you're just procrastinating because you're afraid to do something or you're worried or you're anxious, that's not really a good reason to procrastinate because we are all terrified of doing certain things. We are all fearful of doing certain things. And the crazy thing is sometimes the thing you're most passionate about or the thing you want to do the most 
is something that you're afraid of doing. So in these type of situations, the best way to overcome that fear is to actually just do it. And by just doing it, you are setting yourself up to be successful. And here's why. Sometimes the hardest step is the first step. So there's something you're trying to do, but you're afraid to do it and you're procrastinating, you're putting it off, you're not doing it. If you just sit down and say, I'm going to do it and just do it, then you've already taken the hardest step. That's the first step. And then each step you take afterwards is just not going to be as hard or difficult. Now, when you just do things, is it going to be right the first time? No, it's not. And you shouldn't expect it to be right. But the more you keep doing it, the better it is. You know, I think of it like riding a bike. Now, when I was a kid and I learned how to ride a bike, I was kind of nervous because, you know, I didn't know how to ride a bike. But I got on a bicycle. I just started it. Of course, I fell lots of times. There were times I ran into things, but I eventually learned how to ride a bike. And I think that's how it is with life. You just have to take the chance. You just have to take the opportunity. Yeah, it's going to be scary because you're not sure what's going to happen. You might feel you're like you're free falling. You may feel like it's not going to work out. But the thing is, if you take that chance and you take that risk and you work and you put in the time and the effort to be successful at it, then you will be successful at what it is and if you set your standards high you're not going to fall far from where you want to be so my whole plan is to apply this week i'll let you know what happens whether i get it or i don't i'm fine either way it's just that this is something i want to do so there we go i've learned a lot about myself in self-quarantine and i'm pretty sure you have too i'm sure there are tons of things you've learned about yourself i'm sure you have been had a lot of time to think because you know being home a lot gives you that time that you need to think. So I know you had lots of time to self-assess and actually figure out things about yourself and learn things about yourself. Now, if you, like me, have been on this journey of self-exploration and getting to know yourself better during this quarantine time, I would love to find out some of the things you're learning about yourself. Now, it could be good things. It could be bad things. I don't care. I just want to know what are you finding out about yourself and What do you plan? What do you plan to do with this knowledge that you have about yourself? So, if you want to share this with me, just head over to the Music and Vibes Facebook page and send me a message telling me what are some of the things that you've learned about yourself and how you plan to use this newfound insight that you have about yourself to be successful. All right, guys, I can't wait to hear from you. Today on the podcast, we are going to be talking about breaking negative cycles in your relationship. Okay, let's just be honest for a minute before we even get started. All of us have negative cycles in our relationships that we need to break and that need to be broken. I don't care how good your relationship is, there's always something that can be worked on and improved upon. Now, I'm sure if you really, really, really think about it, there is one argument that constantly, consistently comes up that both you and your partner keep having a hard time finding a way around or solving you know and a funny thing about it is the problem is not always an easy thing to detect because even though you may be arguing about something the problem might not even be the argument it could be the fact that you and your significant other or you and your partner don't exactly know how to deal with difficult situations. Maybe you don't know how to communicate. Maybe that could be the issue. So maybe what you guys are arguing about or fighting about is not the problem at all, but it could be your communication styles that you guys have or the fact that you're not listening to what each other's saying. So this could be the problem, and it may not even be what you're actually arguing about or discussing. So all of us have negative cycles, and most of these cycles show up whether we're getting into an argument or we're going through a difficult time. And I think it's because when things are good, you know, things are just good. You're happy. Life is great. There's nothing that can go wrong. You're not thinking about anything negative about your partner. But when things go bad or you have a difficult time or there's a difficult subject that you guys have to bring up, sometimes people don't know how to deal with those things. So what do we do? 
we resort to the way we always deal with things. You know, that's our default. All of us have defaults. Like, you can be happy, you can be kind, you can work on yourself. But it can get to a point that sometimes things are so stressful and so intense that you don't know how to deal with it. So what do you do when you don't know how to deal with things? Yes, we default to what we did before. And sometimes the things that we did before are not always good things to do. And so when we default to things that we did before, what we're doing is continuing negative cycles in our relationships. So that's, this is why people continue to have negative cycles in their relationship, regardless of how long they've been married or even maybe how much they have worked on themselves or the problem. Because in a situation, if they don't have that time to think and do rational things, you're just going to default to what you've always done. Now, negative relationship cycles are described as periods in your relationship where you find yourself in a situation in your relationship where you continue to do the same thing, knowing that it is destructive to your relationship. And what I mean by this is like, let's say you guys are good, you're happy, but then there's a situation where you come up with upon a topic that is a stressful topic for your relationship, a topic that causes tension because you guys have not worked through this problem. So it's this topic that you that comes up and both of you guys know that if you talk about this topic, it's going to come to an argument, you're going to be mad at each other, nothing's going to come up, nothing's going to come of it, you're not going to solve it. But instead, the topic comes up, and instead of doing things differently, you do the same thing because you default to what you normally do. So there's probably like yelling, screaming, accusatory statements, um, not listening, judgment, projection, all of these things. And that is a negative cycle for you to have in your relationship. And But you do this because this is all you know. You can't come up with anything else right now. So you default to this negative cycle in your relationship now there are lots of negative cycles that people go through and i only talked about one which is communication because i know people have that i mean we all have communicating is not always the best thing to do when you're angry or upset or maybe we just don't know the way to communicate and our style communication is not the way our the style that our partner understands or even uses so there's a lot of things that goes along with that but what we're going to do today and i think this would be kind of fun and insightful we're going to talk about some types of negative relationships cycles and we're going to talk about them we're going to talk about why we might do these things and then we're also going to talk about why or what we need to do differently to change this, okay? So if you guys want to write some of this down, go right ahead. If you're driving, do not write anything down. (laughs) Just listen to it again, and we will be able to go. You can go back, listen to it again, and write it. Uh, Write it down. I may um, just post some of these things on Instagram periodically so you can get it, or I may add it to our show notes. I don't know how we want to do this, so if I just go put a list on Facebook, whatever. I'll try to remember to get this out to you. But what we're going to do is just talk about some of the destructive negative cycles that you could be experiencing in your relationship or may experience in your relationship. And we're going to talk about why you might do it. And we're going to talk about what we can do to fix the problem. Now, the first thing that a lot of people do when they're having a difficult time in their relationship, they emotionally distance themselves. Now, this is a common thing. It occurs in relationships. And this is when both partners slowly drift away from each other. And they become emotionally disconnected. Now, this happens when people use secondary or alternate emotions like anger to cover up their actual emotions in order to avoid talking about their desires and feelings that are most important to them. This is passive-aggressive behavior, and it avoids meaningful conversation. And it just shuts the other person down when... They try to ask what's wrong. So, why do we do it? Well, the reason some people may do this is because they don't want to be vulnerable. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Not everyone likes to open up or even become vulnerable in front of other people. So, it's possible that your partner may feel like their deepest, darkest feelings won't be properly heard or respected They might be afraid of what you may think or what you could say. So this makes them distant and unable to connect with you on an emotional level. Now, if you're, or that's one reason, 
another thing could be another reason could be that your partner is displaying feelings of unhappiness and sadness in front of you and you may not know how to respond to that that i totally get because i am one of those people where i'm like a happy person most of the time the glass is always half full not half empty even when i do get down and out and want to cry about something it's like i give myself a time limit so i'll cry about it i feel whatever it is and then once i feel it i'll be like okay what can i do to change this so if someone like me who's always thinking about changing things and how to make things better and fixing the problem you know if i encounter someone who's opposite from me like say my partner is not someone who is always happy or sees the glass as half full but half empty instead then if they're having a hard time and they're displaying signs of sadness or they're not happy in front of me, I may not know how to respond. And a lot of times, I'm just going to be honest, it's taken a lot of work for me to learn how to respond to these situations because I didn't know how to respond. And when I didn't know how to respond, what did I do? I kind of shut down because it's like, I don't know what to say because my whole thing is like, I want to tell people, hey, it's not that bad. It's going to be okay. Just keep working through it. Life is going to be great. You know, I want to keep encouraging you. But sometimes people don't need to hear all of my encouragement. They just need me to listen. And if I'm unable to listen and I can't help you or fix your problem or save you or make things better, then yes, people like me do shut down. And because we don't know what to do, we really don't. So these are two reasons why people might emotionally distance themselves. One is because they're afraid of what you're going to say or what your reaction is going to be. They don't, they're afraid to be vulnerable for, and they're afraid to be vulnerable in front of you. That could be one reason. Or another reason could be that they just don't know what to do. They don't know how to, they know they can't help, but they don't know what else to do since they can't help. So these are two problems. Now, why is this a problem? These are problems because when you emotionally distance yourself from someone, you're kind of like abandoning them and you're letting them know. You're giving them feelings of doubt as if whether you actually love them or not. So this could lead to a lot of different things. It can result in a lack of intimacy, feelings of loneliness or abandonment. It limits conversations and it only gives you work-related communication. Now, people who continue to do this for long periods of time can end up either having affairs or the marriage may not work out. Lots of things can happen. So before we talk about, in, in order to avoid all of these bad things that could happen, I guess the question is, like, what do you do? So the best thing to do that can help overcome emotional distance in a relationship is the readiness and acceptance to change. So you may just need to accept the fact that this is a problem that requires immediate attention and that you need to change things around to make it better. This can mean like giving up old habits of criticisms, giving up old habits of trying to fix things. It could mean that you need to step out of your comfort zone, me for instance, and actually listen instead of trying to solve problems. Listen, like really listen and just be with them in the moment. Like feel what they're feeling, listen to them and not try to fix it. A lot of times that's all people need. Now, if, some, if it's someone who's afraid of being vulnerable, then maybe you need to change your approach and let them know that I'm here for you. It's okay to cry in front of me. It's okay to tell me how you're feeling. You know, just let them know that you are there. And I always suggest that if this is something that is happening in your relationship, see a counselor because a counselor is going to be able to help you and your partner be able to communicate and feel what's going on and reconnect. So... If this is a problem, then see a counselor and they can also help you as you go through this and figure out what the root of the problem is. And then they can suggest ways to resolve the issue permanently. Now, trust is a negative, can be a negative cycle in a relationship. Now, just like love, trust is such a key factor in your relationship and in the foundation of your marriage. So when there's a lack of trust between two people, things can happen. And a lot of things can happen to reduce trust. We talked about it last week. It can be selfishness. It can be lying. A lot of things can happen. But th that can take away the trust that your partner has in you. Or that can diminish the trust that you have in your partner. Now, how do we lose trust in people? Well, it's easy. We lose trust in people because we feel that we cannot trust them. We don't feel that they're dependable or that 
they're going to be there when we need them. We don't feel as if we can trust them to have our back in situations. We don't feel as if we can trust them to do the right thing in situations. That is why so many times trust in a relationship gets lost. And when this happens, this can create a negative cycle. So even if you guys have worked out your situation and worked out your issues, the fact that you don't, you no longer have that trust in your partner will bring up a lot of things. Like if something happens, you revert to, oh, but I can't trust them. And so each time that happens, that's a negative cycle when you feel that you can't trust someone and it constantly comes up in your relationship. And this is a huge problem in your relationship because a lack of trust constricts a relationship and it doesn't leave any room for it to grow or expand. It creates feelings of insecurity, resentment, and fear that begins to dominate the whole relationship in ways that it is hard to get back from. Like, there may not be trust. People may seem controlling because they do not trust you. It makes one super cynical about everything. And you may even try to control your partner when you don't trust them. So these are serious problems. Now, how can you fix this? The first thing you need to do is to try to identify why there's a lack of trust in the first place. And I love this because it's like, in order to figure out what the problem is, a lot of times it just takes going back, like mentally just thinking about what, when was the day I stopped trusting my partner and why? Now, when you can figure out the day you start, you stopped trusting your partner and why you stopped trusting them, then you can understand what the root of the problem is you can talk about it with your partner in a non-blaming way and remember one thing there's no one at fault here and no one needs to be blamed for anything the only way to solve the problem is by doing it together because at the end of the day you and your partner must come out of this stronger together so if you're having problems with trust identify the day that you lost trust in your partner and why and then discuss it in a way where you guys can work together to resolve this issue of no trust. Another negative cycle that I have seen a lot is tons of criticism. Criticism will destroy your marriage in a heartbeat. Like, it goes from name-calling to commenting on each other's work, character, or looks. Husband and wives often end up criticizing and putting each other down. And I don't even know why they do this, but sometimes it happens. Now, your personality can play a huge role in this because people who are narcissists tend to put themselves on a superior pedestal from where they judge their partner on every little thing. Another reason you may criticize is because we've just grown up watching other people do it. So if our parents were people who are very critical and they criticized you all the time, you're going to criticize because you think that's what you do is normal for you, where it's not a normal thing to do. Or if you have relatives who are critical, you're going to criticize. If you have friends who are critical, you are going to be critical as well. And sometimes we just fail to realize how negatively it can affect other people when you criticize them. Now, if this is what you're doing, and if you're critical, and if this is one of the negative cycles in your relationship, then here are some things you need to do. Stop criticizing. <laughs> Number one, stop it. Let today be the day you do not criticize. Try to achieve tolerance. Practice compassion and learn how to be mindful of what you say and how you say things. You know, here's a way that I think about it. Sometimes in relationships, we look at our our partner as like they're the people that's closest to us. So sometimes people who are closest to us get the brunt of your wrath, your fury. You know, they just get to see the whole you and there's like no holds barred with what you say or what you do. But that should not be it. I was reading a book, and it was by Gottman, and he was saying that sometimes in a relationship, you, instead of like, and I know people, one of the things that we say a lot is try to be step into someone else's shoes and try to feel what they're feeling, which is good, but it takes a rational kind of person to do this. It takes a person who has a high level of emotional maturity to do this. And everybody is not there. Let's just be honest. Everybody does not have a high level of emotional maturity or intelligence. Everybody is not on a level where they're mature enough to put themselves in someone else's shoes and try to view things from their point of view. So if you are unable to do this, then what you have to do is treat them just with basic kindness and respect. Now, you know, if you were at work, you wouldn't criticize your boss to their face. Hopefully, you wouldn't criticize them. 
So don't criticize your spouse. You're not going to say mean things to your boss. Don't say it to your spouse. You're not going to be mean to your coworkers. You know, don't be mean to your spouse. The whole thing is what you would do to others, do to your spouse. That is kind, of course, because some people are not nice to other people. But, you know, most of us, most of us, I'm going to say it one more time. Most of us have a compass where we're going to treat people that we work with one way. We're going to be respectful to them. We're going to be polite to them and we're going to be kind. So if you treat your coworkers like that, don't you think your spouse or your partner deserves to have that same type of treatment? Or maybe, and I would say, even better treatment than that? So if you're kind at work, be kind at home. If you are respectful at work, be respectful at home. If you are considerate at work, be considerate at home. If you know that you will open the door for an old person going in the store, open the door for your partner. You know, just regular common courtesy things that you would do to others, practice doing with your partner. And if you do this, this will cut out a whole bunch of the negative cycle things. Now, we have some more negative relationship cycles that I'm going to talk about. Blaming is a terrible cycle to get into because you're just blaming the other person like it's their fault for everything. And if it is two of you, it's both your fault. Now, yes, they may have initiated it, but you responded and you acted in a way that also added to the problem instead of being part of the solution you know it's funny because i used to be the person like well why is it my fault when they started the argument and i just defended myself well let's be honest like an argument you're not really defending yourself it's not like you're in a fight for your life it's just an argument and i think sometimes in arguments our egos get in the way we want to be the one to say well i won that argument and if we lose we feel like oh well i lost well, to be honest, in arguments, it's not a win or a lose situation. Because when you're arguing with your partner, you lose either way. Even if you win, even if you quote unquote win, you're still lost because you have lost trust, you have lost um, respect, you've lost a lot of things. So you didn't win, you, just, you might have won the argument, but you in essence kind of lost the war. So the goal in relationships is to win. Both parties should win. So there's an argument. A person cannot argue by themselves. So if you know that you just need to shut it down until you guys can talk rationally and talk in a way that is kind and conducive to a relationship, then wait. Don't engage in the argument. Hold out. Don't say anything. And just wait until you both are in a calmer place and then talk about it. You know, it's better to do that than to erode your relationship daily by having this negative cycle of conflict and non-issues that have not been solved. So the best that's the best thing to do. And when it comes to blaming, that is not something that should be done. The blame game occurs in relationships, and this happens when someone feels the other person did something wrong. But you are responsible for your own reactions. Just like they're responsible for their actions, you're responsible for your reactions. So blaming is not conducive to your relationship. And it's a problem because when you're blaming, you are not focusing on what you can do to make things better. It's just your fault. And it kind of puts you in a space where it's almost like you can't do anything. It's all their fault. They have to be the one to fix this. They have to make it right. When that's not true. That's not how it goes. Now, yes, they should make it right. They should make amends. But you don't have to be caught up in this whole situation because you can make amends for yourself you can choose to forgive them you can choose not to respond negatively you can also leave i mean there are lots of things that you can do so blaming someone is not the way to go remember you are a team you work together and you cannot work together if you're constantly blaming each other now i like basketball my favorite teams are team is the lakers so let's just say you're playing basketball and you Someone on your team tried to make a shot, but they missed it. Are you going to stop in the middle of the game and be like, this is your fault. If we lose, it's your fault because you should have made that shot and you should have done this and you should be better. You should have practiced more. No, you're not going to do that because you're in the middle of a game. You are going to continue with the game. And if there's anything that you need to discuss after, you'll discuss it. Well, you know what? That's life. That's how marriage is. That's how relationships are. You don't need to stop in the middle of your relationship to blame someone and to point the finger at someone. Instead, you need to sit down and say, okay, what can we do better? Because remember, marriage is not about me or you. It's about we. What you can do if you find yourself judging or blaming is the first stop. 
The best thing to do is do a self-evaluation, self-reflection, consider your own actions and your behaviors. Try to understand that there are a few things that you may have said or done which unintentionally may have contributed to the problem. See, when we're busy focusing on other people, we're not focusing on ourselves. It's easy to blame because we're putting it off on somebody else. We're projecting our feelings onto them, and we're not dealing with ourselves. And we're not perfect, and we have probably done something to escalate the situation instead of making the situation easier to deal with. We probably did something to make it worse. Instead of, instead of de-escalating, we escalated. So... It's important to take responsibility for your actions and apologize to your partner for the wrongs that you did. Now, you're not saying that, oh, he or she wasn't wrong. No, you're not saying that. What you're saying is, hey, I did this. This is my part in this, and I'm sorry for that. And you apologize. Now, at the same time, if your partner has hurt you in any way, make sure you communicate your feelings to them and let them know that their behavior has affected you. So that is how you would deal with that negative cycle in a relationship. Jealousy is also a negative cycle in a relationship, and it is a deadly sin. Like, if there's anything in a relationship that can destroy a relationship faster than anything, I would say jealousy. Even above an affair, I think jealousy is 10 times worse. Because you can work through an affair. You can work through infidelity. There are things you can work through if you choose to. However, jealousy is different because it can ruin your relationship in ways that one can't even imagine. It's also difficult to deal with a jealous partner because the problem is not you. The problem is them and their own insecurities and their vulnerabilities. It has to do with them. And if these are issues that they don't recognize or issues where they don't think they need to get help on or seek a professional help, then there's really nothing you can do. And it's a problem because jealous people can be controlling. They can get upset if they don't receive 100% of the attention 100% of the time. And they will put you down. They have unrealistic expectations of your relationship. Or they can be possessive of you, which could lead to domestic violence and some other things. So jealousy is not something you want in a partner. To be honest, jealousy can have disastrous effects on a relationship, one of which is a lack of trust and belief in the other person, even if the other person hasn't done anything. A jealous person can think that just because you say hi to someone at the grocery store that you're having an affair. A jealous person could think that you're hiding money from them just because you may have an extra $10. That is not a good thing to do. So if you are feeling jealous or if you are in a relationship or if you're in a relationship where your partner's feeling jealous then here are just some things you can do one thing is to try to overcome negativity by recognizing that you have an issue or by recognizing that they have an issue acceptance of one shortcoming is the key toward becoming a better version of yourself secondly start trusting your partner and communicate with them if you feel the jealousy resurfacing again I want to just throw in here that you should also seek the help of a professional counselor because you're not jealous for no reason. Or your partner is not having issues with jealousy just because they out of the blue, they're just like, hey, I think I'm just going to be jealous. There is a reason. There's a deep-rooted issue that needs to be dealt with, and the counselor needs to help you deal with that issue so that you will understand why you're jealous, why you react the way you do, why you do the things that you do, and know how to recognize it. You may realize that you have some triggers that you have that trigger your jealousy and it happened from something that happened to you in your childhood or maybe in your early adult years or in your adolescence. But you won't recognize that if you don't talk about it and self-assess. Self-assessing is hard, believe me, because it takes a lot of looking at yourself to see where I went wrong, what did I do, what could I do better. And if you are not in the space where you can do that, then you're not going to recognize your problem. If you find it hard to self-assess, then you're not going to recognize the problem. And in order to fix any problem, any problem, you have to recognize that you have a problem. So that is why it's important to get the help of a counselor to help you figure out what the problem is. Once you guys figure out what the problem is, you can begin to work on the problem. And I suggest if you are the jealous person, see a counselor. If you 
are married or in a relationship with a jealous person, then you need to suggest that maybe they see a counselor. And I would suggest that you see a counselor so that you can work on yourself. So you can make a decision about whether this is even a relationship that you want to stay in and make sure that whatever you decide, you're okay with yourself and you're okay with your decision and that you're able to move forward in a positive and healthy way. These are just some of the negative cycles that people experience in relationships. There are a lot more, which I'm, I don't have the time to talk about, but maybe we'll do another episode and talk about that later on. But it's just important for you to realize that negative cycles in relationships can undermine your relationship and they can hurt your relationship. But the good news is that you can always work on these negative cycles. And the first step to working on anything is realizing you have the problem. Once you realize you have the problem, the next thing is to identify when the problem started. After you identify when the problem started, realize what triggers you to feel this way. Once you figure that out, then you can begin to change and modify your behavior so that you can stop reacting in such a way that is undermining your relationship and that is creating these negative cycles in your relationship. So in order to do all of that, I would suggest strongly that you seek the help of a counselor so that they can help you navigate through these negative cycles in your relationship. Remember that you or your spouse are in these situations because of the fact of you're using them as coping mechanisms. So you may not be a bad person. You, your spouse may not be a bad person, but this is just how you guys cope. And remember I said at the beginning of the podcast, if you don't know how to cope or deal with something, you're going to go back to your default. And your default could be these negative relationship cycles that you are experiencing. Now, I never said that these were good ways to cope with conflict, but it is the way that you or your spouse are coping with conflict. So in these kinds of situations, I would also suggest, in addition to see a counselor, that it's important to create a safe environment where both you and your partner can begin to heal from the negative cycles in your relationship. Now, repairing the damage from these negative cycles is not going to happen immediately. So if you think you see a counselor one time, or you try one of these suggestions, and things are going to magically work, and life is going to be good, you're going to be disappointed, and you are mistaken, because it took time to get where you guys are now. So if it took time to get there, it's going to take time to heal and time to fix these situations. So my advice to you would be to stay consistent and to continue to work on your relationship. And eventually, you will begin to see the results that you're looking for by staying consistent and by working on your relationship. Consistency is key. The more you do things, the more it's embedded into your brain, your wiring, you will continue to do these things. And I also want you to remember this. When in doubt, be kind. When in doubt, treat your partner like you would treat somebody at work. And you know how you would treat them? With respect and kindly. Because none of us go to work and just treat our partners or our co-workers or treat our co-workers rude and disrespectful. We are actually a nicer version of ourselves at work than we are at home sometimes. So when in doubt, your default should be, how would I treat my coworker? Oh, I would not call them stupid. I would be nice to them. Be nice to your spouse or your partner. Your default would be if when you're frustrated, instead of lashing out and being angry, how would you do this at work? Oh, you would handle it this way. So handle it like you would at work. It's all about being kind. You know, if, if you can't put yourselves in someone's situation or in their shoes, if you're not able to do that right now, that's fine, but you are able to be kind. You are able to be compassionate. You are able to be tolerant and accepting. How do I know this? Because you do this at work. If you did not do it at work, you would not have a job. So remember, when all else fails, if you're ever in doubt, default to how would I treat my coworker. And if you would treat them with respect and kindness, then that's how you should definitely treat your partner. All right. Well, the song that we're going to listen to today is called, Who Are You Talking To? And it's about a woman who's in a relationship and is going through some serious negative cycles. Who's calling you now? It's late at night. Don't try to tell me that it's your mama. I see the way you call your phone and talk real low. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? 
phone number But you tell me She's just a friend If that is true Then why don't you Let me answer the phone Learn next time she calls Before I end the podcast, I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you to BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, for their continued support of the Music and Vibes podcast. Now, Music and Vibes has partnered up with BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, to help give you guys a resource in case you needed some counseling. I know I talk about counseling all the time, but counseling is important, and especially with everything that's going on in the world, it's important for you to be the best version of yourself that you can be, physically, emotionally, and mentally, and spiritually. So if you need some help, and if there is something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals, then BetterHelp is there to help you. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, will assist your needs and match you with your own professional licensed therapist. The great thing is you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Now, this is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. So if you're thinking just about calling because you're having a crisis, then I would suggest that you reach out to 911. But this is not a crisis line. If you want self-help, I would suggest reading books. This is actually professional counseling and is done securely online. Now, there is a broad range of expertise available here, which may not be available to you locally or in your area. The service is available for clients worldwide, so no matter where you are, if you're listening in Alaska, they can help you. If you're listening in Antarctica or wherever you're listening, they can help you. So don't think that just because you may not be in the United States that you can't get help from BetterHelp, because you can. So they are available worldwide. Now, you can just log on to your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't even have to go sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. And in this era that we have of the coronavirus and COVID-19, this is a great way for you to meet with your counselor because you don't have to meet with them in person. You don't have to worry about the mask or social distancing. This is the best way to do it because you can socially distance. You can be in your house. They can be in their office or wherever they are. And they can help you navigate through a lot of these situations. And guys, remember I was talking to you today about if you have negative cycles in your relationship? Well, you know, here you go. Here is someone who can help you if you or your partner need help. Now, they do offer um, individual counseling. And the reason I love partnering with them is because... They also offer couples counseling, which is huge since we are a podcast that talks all about relationships and all about couples. So if you need help, these are the people to go to. Now, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they're going to make it easy for you and match you with someone who's compatible for you. It's also free to change the counselor if you need to. 
is more affordable than traditional online counseling and financial aid is available which I is true I've looked at the pricing the pricing is amazing now I know when I used to um, go to a counselor myself or when my husband and I were doing marriage counseling it costs a lot more than what they're charging you here so this is a good way if you need help but you don't have the money that you you think you need to afford it is really affordable and they also have financial aid which is amazing because they can help you so I don't want you to think that just because you may be going through a financial um, challenges right now or you may not have the money that you cannot get the counseling you need it is available it is there for you you can do this so with the financial aid that they have available they also have lower prices than traditional counseling so this really is an affordable option for you better help H-E-L-P, wants you to start living a happier life today which is what this podcast is all about being a better version of yourself having a happy relationship but you being happy you know just having a home that is a place where you love to come home to and enjoy each other so this is a way for you if you realize that you're not as happy as you want to be or your relationship is not what you want it to be better help can help you find a counselor who can help you navigate through whatever challenges you may be going through now what we're going to do is i have a link that you um, that i have in my show notes all you have to do is click on the link in the show notes and by doing this you can get 10 percent off your first month of services from better help so click on the link in the show notes then your promo code is music and vibes and i'm going to put all this in the show notes so that you will see what it is and it will make it'll just be easier for you to do so in the show notes just click on the link promo code is music and vibes put it in and they're going to give you 10 percent off of your first month and we're do- they're doing this because like me we want you to have the best life possible we want you to be the best version of yourself that you can be so thank you so much better help for working with the music and vibes to make sure you guys have that resource that you need to live the life that you deserve to have another thing i would like to do is just say guys thank you so much for listening to me i just love spending time with you and yes i talk a lot but i love talking to you i love spending time with you so thank you for listening i also want to thank you and encourage you to share the podcast with others now i know you are sharing because i can see it reflected in the data and the um, analytics so thank you for sharing the podcast I also want to ask and request that you please share this episode today because I know there's someone out there who's dealing with negative relationship issues and cycles and they need to know that yes, they can break these cycles. So share this episode of the podcast and if you have not subscribed to the podcast already, please just go ahead and subscribe and it's easy to do. Just click on the link in the show notes and it will help you and take you to the page where you need to subscribe. And you can also go to the website to subscribe. So subscribe and share. Share and subscribe. All right. Now, if you guys need to contact me, all of my social media um, information is listed in the show notes. So just feel free to click on any of them and you can contact me. If you want to just leave me a message, just say, hey, Kiana, what's up? Go ahead and do that. You can just reach me on face on our Facebook page. You can reach me on Instagram, and you can also reach me on our website. So however you want to communicate with me, just let me know. Just go on any one of those sites, leave me a message, and I promise I will get back to you. All right, guys, I think that's all for this week. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions for me, you know how to reach me, Facebook, Instagram, or through our website. And I will be happy to respond to whatever you want to talk about. All right, well, if you have nothing for me, I think that's all. And I will talk to you later. And don't forget, the information for Better H-E-L-P, Better Help, is going to be in our show notes. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can just go ahead and do that as well. All right, I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye! Times you got-